What's up, Marksman from Marksman's Music Academy, and today we're covering a really hot topic, sidechain. But more importantly, how to make your sidechain like a pro does it, so that you can have really long sustained basses which sound amazing and not have that characteristic mm -wah, mm -wah, mm -wah, ducking effect which just kind of ruins the groove for your track. Now, of course, you can use this as a stylistic effect. I'm going to show you a really cool way to do it, which is going to revolutionize your productions, and it's something that you use every single day. So before we continue, please do remember to like and subscribe. There's a ton of new videos coming, so you don't want to miss a beat. Press that bell icon. You won't regret it. Anyway, let's hop into Ableton. So here we are in Ableton, and I've got open one of my projects, which is actually Warp Speed. It's one of my most popular tracks and one of my all-time favorite tracks, if I do say so myself, that I've ever produced. So if you haven't heard it, you can go check it out on Spotify. But basically what we have here is the drums and the bass uh, only, because that's what we want to hone in on for now. So what I've got here set up is a little audio effect rack, which is at the end of my bass group or bass bus. So I have three different types of sidechain. We have no sidechain, we have conventional sidechain, and we have multiband sidechain, which is the pro tip. So we're going to compare the two. So firstly, what is sidechain? Well, if you're new to production, sidechain is super important. And basically what it does is you choose a signal to act as a trigger or an input or a sidechain and the other signal will then duck whenever this signal hits. So the classic example is having everything duck when the kick hits, but especially the bass, because they're fighting in the same space. So this means that the bass is gonna drop out of the way when the kick hits, but then come back to its full glory. So firstly, let's compare what this sounds like without any side chains. This is no side chain at all. So what you might be noticing is the kick isn't punching through at all. It's sounding super buried in the mix because the bass is in the way. And this is exacerbated because we have actually have three bass sounds. We have a long continuous bass sounding like this. Then we have a stab bass sounding like this. And then a kind of fifth stab bass as well. So all together, it sounds like this. So the kick is competing in the same space. So what do I mean by that? Well, basically in your low end, everything ab below about 120 hertz or maybe even 200 hertz, I would say, is um, considered the low end. But where the kick and bass typically sit is in the below 120 hertz range. So if you look here, we've got a lot of stuff in this below 120 hertz range. Now, if I open up the EQ on the kick, so this is the kick. Look at that, a lot of stuff in this sub-region here, which is where the thump of the kick is going to come and is what makes people dance in the club. So ideally, you need to solve this problem. I, I say ideally, you need to solve this problem. So the first way of solving it is by doing absolutely nothing at all, which I would not recommend. And if you don't know what sidechain is, the first thing to do is learn about sidechain. So with sidechaining, I've got this sidechain example set up here. So typically with sidechain, you're going to use a compressor of some sort. But it's worth noting you can sidechain multiple different types of effects like gates, which can be a really cool thing, or even EQs or the, the possibilities are endless. But the classic example is a sidechain compression, which is what we have here. So in Ableton's compressor, if you press this little arrow button here, it's going to open up the sidechain settings. So I have the input from sidechain, which is essentially the kick, but it's a doubled kick in this track, which is another pro tip, not for this video. But um, basically it means whenever the the kick drops out, I can still have the, it, the side chaining effect going on if I really want to, um, which takes place here during the transition to the break. But anyway, that's not part of the video. Um, so let's check out what this side chaining sounds like. So, so with the kick and bass, this is what side chaining looks like. So you can hear that pulsing, right? Compared to no side chaining, where the kick's a lot more buried because it's not ducking out of the way. Okay, so. Basically, all you need to do is bring it in so we can just recreate these settings here just to show you how easy it is. Let's bring it in there. 
open up the side sidechain thing, press sidechain, audio from, kick, or sidechain, whatever, if you use a ghost kick, which I have. And then you want to have a pretty high ratio of about four, but you, you can go higher. It doesn't really matter too much. Have a pretty quick attack, but not necessarily zero or close as close to zero as possible because that will introduce some like clicking, which is not nice. And then usually you can set the release. You can set it to um, like a particular division of the track, like an eighth note, a sixteenth note. So the com but sometimes just set it to auto. That generally tends to work the best. And all you do is drag the threshold down and get the amount of side chaining you want. So I'll show you. So this is no side chaining. Then that's obviously like a lot of side chaining. That's probably about the level we want. But you'll notice that the whole base is ducking. And as I said at the start of the sidechain introduction, the problem is in this 120 hertz range. And these bases are, apart from the deep stabby one, which even has some higher frequencies, they're f full spectrum sounds. Like if we look at this long bass here, if you look at the EQ on this, where is it? Let's open up this one. This has got frequencies coming all the way up to about three to five kilohertz which aren't actually clashing with the kick. So it doesn't make sense to duck those unless it's a stylistic effect. So the pro tip I wanna show you is multiband sidechain compression. Now, effectively what a multiband compressor is, is multiple compressors, but acting only at certain frequency bands. So using Ableton's multiband dynamics, which is a multiband compressor, you can use any multiband compressor you like, it doesn't matter. Um, we can we have three bands on this one we have a high band so anything above two and a half kilohertz we have a mid band which is between two and a half and the lower limit which is 120 hertz and this low band which is everything below 120 hertz so typically what i will do is drag this high band down to 300 hertz because there's still a little bit of clashing going on in the 120 to 300 and basically have this low band here doing most of the side chaining and you can kind of smash this band pretty hard because that's where the problem is that's where we need to solve it but we don't need to necessarily duck the rest of it so with the kick check this out you're still getting the kick punching through but it's letting that bass be nice and rich and sustained However, you might want to introduce a little bit of stylistic amount, a little bit of stylistic compression in this sort of low mid range. So maybe let's add a little bit here. Just a little bit. A bit more compression. Kick come through on the low end. And then on the high band, we could also, um, by the way, in order to change the threshold on the multi band, you click and drag it downwards. And these lines here, the thick, the, the narrowness of the bars determines how high the threshold is. So ideally we want basically essentially limiting taking place so an infinite ratio. Um, and then we can use this to basically come up with a stylistic side chain that we want. So we can have the whole thing duck a little bit. To our taste, but generally I'd say just stick with the um lows and mids and only use the mids a little bit uh you don't really need to duck the highs so now let's compare the difference between the multi-band side chain and the classic side chain and what i want you to listen to most importantly are the sustain on the bass and the punch of the kick okay so this is classic side chain now this is multi-band classic So hopefully what you're seeing is that the kick punch is basically the same because the problem region is below 120 hertz where this multiband, this low band is. This low band is here where we're doing most of the compression and maybe a little bit in this sort of mid band between 120 and 300. But the sustain on the bass 
will ring out much longer and we still get the benefits of having that kick punch. So this is a really good tip that I would recommend to everybody is to use multiband sidechain compression rather than classic compression. Now you also have things like LFO tool which essentially do the same thing or duck. So I don't actually have LFO tool but I have duck. So this is again very similar if we just load this up here. Now we have like you have a lot more control over the shape of your sidechain and if you enable this crossover setting, I'm not entirely sure what it looks like on LFO tool, but it's basically the same. We want to have the crossover frequency about 120 or so. And then we have this low band absolutely getting smashed by the compressor. Maybe turn it down a little bit in this high band basically doing nothing. And this will be a very similar effect here. So there are many ways to solve the problem, but I'd say either duck using the crossover setting or multiband sidechain is the best in terms of getting you a long sustained rich bass while having a tight punchy low end. Super important. So interestingly we've opened up this pads and you'll see that I've used a classic sidechain on the pads because I wanted the pads going like mwah, 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 mwah. but because there's a long sustain on the bass like I wanted to preserve that. So it's a stylistic choice at the end of the day, but the more transparent and better solution is to use multiband. There you have it. That's how you can use multiband sidechain compression to really tighten up your low end and have much more transparent result rather than using conventional compression as a sidechain. So you can apply this principle to literally anything. So say that you had a problem with the hats coming through your mix because there's a, a some high frequency synths that are playing at the same time, no problem. You can sidechain these synths to your hi-hat group, but obviously you're not gonna be ducking the low end, you would be ducking the high end. Now, you have to use this sparingly in this case. With kick and bass, you wanna be pretty aggressive with this, but with stuff like this, you just maybe do a couple of decibels just to give it that extra bit of lift. So hope that all makes sense to you. Now, this is just one of the many components that I cover in my kick and bass mastery course, where we go through how to make a really tight and professional sounding low end every single time on your track. So you can just follow the formula step by step and you'll always have a really amazing tight and punchy low end. It's a it's a 60 minute course and it will be all you ever need to know about kicks and basses. Head to the link in the description and go sign up for that. It will really help me out. But also if you don't learn anything or think the course isn't good, then you can get a full refund. No questions asked at any time. Just send me an email. Please do remember to like and subscribe. Do join my Produce Like a Pro Facebook group. It's again, link is also in the description. It's we have weekly track feedback calls and lots of exclusive content goes in there which doesn't go out on YouTube. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.